just kind of kicking things off, man. Uh, why don't you go ahead and kind of give a little backstory on uh, Steezy D, man? How far back are we going? Uh, go as far back as you want to, <laughs> man. As far as back as you want to. Uh, I mean, so I guess it all kind of ties. It, uh, go all the way back because it does kind of tie into like what I do now with music and kind of how I evolved as a music head. And so kind of moved around a lot. Mom moved around a lot. Had a job that moved around. Uh, born in Florida. Lived in Atlanta for a couple of years. And then lived in Pennsylvania for like first grade through seventh grade. And um, had family in Kansas. And then they moved down to Texas. And so that's how I started coming to Texas. And probably around like 05-ish. Um and that's when I kind of really started getting into music, probably around like second, third grade, man, back when like LimeWire was a thing. I don't know if y'all remember LimeWire. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would always ask my mom to burn CDs for me. And um, it got to the point where one day she's like, she was sick of it because like she refereed basketball and then had a, had a normal job and all that stuff too. So she's like, I don't have time to like yeah. <laughs> be burning you a CD, at three, four CDs every week. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I would just listen to stuff on the radio and I'm like, I want that. I want yeah. that. I want that. I want that. Um, and so I started burning my own CDs and eventually started buying CDs. And, like, I still have a collection to this day. It's actually at my mom's house because she holds on to stuff better than I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a whole tower about this tall of CDs that – some that she bought, but a lot that I bought or had her buy me starting from back in, like, second grade. Do you remember what the first CD you ever bought was? Get Rich or Die Trying. Oh, Damn, shit. Oh, Hold on, man. How old are you, bro, if you don't mind me asking? 25. Okay, so you, yeah, you, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. You're a little younger. He's I, 25 and was on 50 Cent, though. though. I bought like a, uh, I bought like a little bootleg version, though. Uh, yeah. I bought it from my barber shop. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we all had those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, no, and then, like, I still have all the CDs from like early 2000s, and that's kind of like always, that's how I've always been in music, and then I was in band in early um, middle school. Where yeah. did you play? Well, actually, no, 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 I lied. I started music. I started taking drum lessons in, I can't remember the grade, but I know the year, 2002. Mm. Okay. So I took drum lessons for a few years, and then I was in band for like two years in middle school. I played the trombone really random, mm-hmm. but uh, that was my shit. Um, Where'd you first chair, though? We didn't have that. Okay, um, y'all didn't have chairs? Nah, this was still mm-hmm. when I lived in Pennsylvania, so we didn't gotcha. have that. Oh, it, gotcha. was, it was. I don't really remember too much about band, but it was way different than how it is down here. Okay. Um, but it was cool. Um, and then I used to do like a like little. Uh, <laughs> my grandma would take me to a what is it? Vacation Bible School. Man. And they had like rap, um, rap battles. Okay. Where you would just like memorize it and um, have to recite and all that. And I won them like every summer. It was so much fun. Um, yeah, that is so funny, bro. I was literally just just talking to uh, uh, production about like black churches and yeah. like you know uh, Bible study. Yeah, and, like, it's like, different, I, bro. It's really different. <laughs> Vacation Bible, you so you competed, man. Yeah, the, like these little rap battles. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm sure somewhere like in a tote somewhere, where, like my mom still has like the little cassettes from like the rap, from, like having Yo, the rap to memorize them because that is funny. We got them on cassettes, <laughs> which was really cool. Because I mean, this wasn't this is was, like probably oh. Seven, oh eight okay. ish, and because uh, I was going back and forth from Texas to Pennsylvania, because I would come down here all summer until like that's kind of how I got put on the Texas music. But, like people always ask me, they're like, "You're not from Texas? Like you've I moved to Texas <laughs> in oh nine, okay? But, like how do you know so much about Texas music and like especially like older Texas music if you moved here when you were in eighth grade? And it's yeah. like I would come down here every summer and hang out with, like my aunt and uncle. And they were like night owls and like and the uncles and like the car crew, you know, all that how that used to be a whole mm-hmm. thing. And so I'd be out all night with them. And so I would come down here in the summer and to get like all the Paul Wall mixtapes and albums and all the, you know, Swisher House shit. And I would take that back up to Pennsylvania. Dude, that was at the height of it all too. The peak, <laughs> the peak, like like the prime, like all that. And so I would get those all those albums and take them back up to Pennsylvania, put everybody on up there, and it was just like what is this? Yeah. Like, nobody listened to shit like that up there, dog. Yeah, like, it was no. all like your normal radio shit. Mm-hmm. Like the they, style was completely different too. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then ended up moving down here, and then stopped doing band because I got in sport. I, I mean, I played like baseball and track and all that um, in Pennsylvania, but I never played football. And like, got in football an accident when I moved to Texas, and so that's kind of how the whole band shit stopped. Yeah. I thought athletics was like PE because we had PE in Pennsylvania, and they were like, "You need a physical." I was like, "Why do I need a physical <laughs> yeah, for PE?" I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah, and I was like, "Why do I need a physical for PE?" And they're like, 
this isn't PE, this is athletics, this is football. I was like, I don't play football. I play baseball. And they're like, you play football now? I was like, what? <laughs> like, yes, you do. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess. And then, I mean, I, football was never really my thing. I never really cared for it. Um, my thing was powerlifting. Okay. And so I kind of used football as a powerlifter. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the guy. Um, I kind of used football as to get more access to the gym. And I just, like, loved working out in high school, which was really weird. Like, I loved, like, cardio and all that I'm lifting and um so that was kind of my thing and then moved to Austin when I had a job was a bartender training co- training coordinator for Carino's the Italian place okay. um in charge of like all front of house training stuff like that wanted to learn how to produce this is like 2016 so a few years ago I'm like 20 about to be 21 at the time okay I'm like, man, I want to start, like, producing. Because my old roommate was a producer, like, a badass producer. Like, he has, like, credits with um, Young Thug and a oh, bunch, bunch of other people. Um, so I was like, man, I, I, I can do that, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I could never really, like, put the pieces of it all together. And so I was going to come to Austin for my job and then go to school. Actually, out here, at like, the recording conservatory mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, for audio engineering um, and music production. Never did it because I just got so busy. And I was like, met a dude that DJed. Well, no. Well, yeah, I met it to the DJ, but this is like Apple Music was like just coming out. Mm-hmm. And so I would make playlists every week and put them out. And all my friends would fuck with it. Because this was before, like, because now, of course, playlists, that's the that's, other yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? Playlist curator. Or yeah, man. And uh, so I was doing this. I was just bored. And I just loved music. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm just going to put together a playlist of shit that I'm listening to every week. You know what I'm saying? Um. And the one day I was like, man, I was like, I wonder if I could make like a mix like DJs do, you know what I'm saying? And so I like downloaded virtual DJ on my man. computer mm-hmm. and like would start making like mixes on SoundCloud. I'm, I'm sure I still have them on, some, <laughs> on one of my old SoundCloud somewhere because every once in a while you got to humble yourself and go back and listen and like, wow. For sure. <laughs> like, um, so I started making those mixes and I would put them out and they got like started gaining a lot of traction. And so one day I bought like a little DJ controller on my lunch break when I was bartending for like 250 bucks and then. Just, I would just work all day and then go home and practice for hours. Just practice, 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 oh, practice, wow. practice for like six, seven months straight. Just every day, just practice, practice for hours on end. Probably like three, four hours a day. How and did just, you know what you were doing? You YouTube, YouTube tutorial? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Learned on YouTube. Okay. At this uh, time, you weren't spending any word. It was just all a hobby. At this no. Point. Um, and then the first party I ever did was I threw a Halloween party in my hometown. What's funny, I didn't even get to end up DJing it. Um because I had somebody else playing before me, one of the homies, and then as soon as I was about to start playing, it was, like, packed, and then the cops came. It was, oh, like, this, it was <laughs> at this, like, giant warehouse, like, outside of town. So, like, oh, so the thing is, like, where I'm from, like, I was known for throwing parties. Like, that was, like, my thing. Like, oh, I man. threw, like, over-the-top parties all the time. Like, at my 18th birthday party, we had, like, a bonfire, and we had a whole 18-wheeler flatbed full of wood pallets for the bonfire. Like, we oh, were shit. all out. Like, wow. I, my 17th birthday party, I threw it at, like, a seven-bedroom lake house. Like, Damn. I was the party guy. That was my <laughs> shit. <laughs> and I guess it works out because, I mean, yeah. like, going into DJing, now I can still be the party you guy. You know? <laughs> yeah. the music thing. Yeah, I was always, a, I was always the one on, like, <laughs> I was like, yo, who, I was like, where's the, where, where's the, where's the stereo at? Where's the aux cord? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, fuck all this music that's on right now. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, I'm going to put my playlist on. Fuck this shit. Uh, but, yeah, started DJing, and then, like I said, just learned on YouTube and, uh, that first party, and then I got a, um, I started doing, I don't know if you, you know, you know Manny Moe? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I started doing a lot of stuff with him on, like, WB and Pro Radio and stuff like that. Oh, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. throwback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then um, me and Manny started, like, our own, like, weekly, like, pretty much like a podcast, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember yeah, something yeah. like that, okay. okay. It was, it, I mean, because we were doing it for the radio, so it was more like the radio, but then, of course, we would post it so you could listen to it like a yeah. podcast. But um, Ahead of y'all's time. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's crazy. I forgot about WB for, yeah, till right now. Like, I've yeah. seen old videos about it. I was like, damn, Manny Mo back then, like, man. And it's crazy because Manny didn't even DJ back then. No, uh, he, he was uh, with his, he had a, the rap group, right? Yeah, I think <laughs> I think they're still a thing. Yeah. They, they still make music. Didn't many of them do like the heat check and shit too? Yeah, heat check. Yo, mm-hmm. shout and out so, Manny Mo, bro. Yeah, so I would, right show. I, I would DJ like their heat check and stuff like okay, that. Okay. Manny put on for the culture in the city for bro, a long yeah, time, bro, man. Bro. Like he put a lot of people on and really helped out. And I love Manny. That's my boy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then I did that stuff with Manny, and then I would start doing like little like hookah lounges in town and stuff like that. And that's kind of like how I got my traction, like really like my first outings. 
Um, and I would do like a birthday party back home every summer at the big club there. And then um, the first the way I kind of really met everybody in the city is I don't know if you remember Austin Mic Exchange, like the, the yeah. Wednesday open mic. They, yep. Yep. Yeah, over at uh, a was, Spider House. Yeah, yeah. Spider House. Yes. That was dope. That was really dope, man. And so I got a. I was one of the resident DJs for AMX, and so that's how I started meeting a lot of the local artists okay. and started connecting with a lot of the guys out here, and um, just kind of did that for a couple of years, and then one day, like, I really started, like, gaining confidence, and I'm like, I did a couple South Buys where I did, like, got to work with, like, really dope people who were really big now, like, I got to DJ for Bia and oh. um, Tyler Yahweh and... Damn. Um, Tokyo Jets and I mean just countless people who are huge now you know yeah um, and I was like man I'm good enough to DJ on 6th Street like I'm I'm ready you know yeah. what I'm saying but I didn't really have any connections and so I would like go I'm not gonna say the name there was this one manager down there who would like he's the only one I really knew at the time and so I would always ask I'd be like yo let me get in at one of your at one of your bars. But like, ah, nah, nah, nah. I don't want to always like blow me off and like really was like gatekeeping me from yeah, trying to yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because um, I worked at the time. Well, so all right, before that, the way I got in, I worked at the bar next door to that, and so I was like, all right, I'm good enough to DJ on Sixth Street. So like, I went around. Literally, I found out that like the bars get their liquor orders on Thursdays, hmm. so there's always a manager there all day on Thursdays and so I went door to door to everywhere I'm like yo are you, are you like I, I give him like like I mean not, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't call it an EPK okay. but more like a re, like it was like a half ass resume slash EPK and okay. I'm like yo this is what I've done blah 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 like I'm trying to do it down here if you guys ever need one I give him a card Yeah. and then uh, one day just out of the blue on like a random Friday night I get a call and this bar's like yo we need a DJ tonight. And oh, I was like, what? <laughs> and this is like two or three months later. And I'm like, what the fuck? Damn. Like, um, and uh, so went there and it was a lot of fun, man. Ended up becoming a slave for that bar working like <laughs> all the time. Jeez. Working, I think like seven. Oh, man, I mean, it was an amazing opportunity. I learned a lot and it got me to where I'm at now. But it's crazy. I look back, I was working like seven nights a week. To make like what I make on like less than what I make on like a Friday night now. Like, oh, <laughs> what bar was this? Do you want to say? No, nah, okay. Not say. okay. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows who it is. Okay, um, but no, nah, I'm not gonna say. Okay. It. <laughs> Yo, crazy. that shit is wild. So you like had that drive in you, man. You were going fucking bar to bar, handing handing stuff out. Like, did you? Um, um, of course, like you know, you said it was like two to three months before you heard back, right? Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a long time. Like I said, it was out of nowhere. Like I'm like at home, like probably. I can't remember. This is probably like 2017. So who knows what I'm doing at the time? I probably just got off work because I started nine to five at the time. So okay. I probably just got off work or something, and I get a call and they're like, "Yo, can is this easy? Can you come? We need a DJ tonight." I was like, "What? Yeah. Like, who is this? Like." <laughs> <laughs> Two to three months, man, I would have got, like, I would have been like, man, ain't nobody fucking with me, dog. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind of how it was. And so I just kind of went back to just, like, just working my nine to five because I was working a lot, man, you know, because I was in a in um, a management position. So I was really busy at work. Yeah. And then, um, so, I mean, yeah. And then ended up getting that. And then um, probably about, I would say... Three to f about a month into that, I was like, I cannot do a nine to five anymore, mm -hmm. and I just and I had went to a new job, and um, way more laid back job that I had way more like flexibility, and I was in training. I was on like day three, and I was like, I <laughs> what happened? Nah, it was about I was about like a week in, I would say like five days in or so, and I said, um, I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to work as much because like I'm starting to DJ more. They're like, I mean, you're still in training, like you don't have to finish this, and I was like. All right, bet. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and that was, the, that was the last time I had a job. And so oh, that was like shit. 2017, sometime around there. And so just been doing it ever since then. And just finally, whenever uh, Poor Choice is open, I will say that because, like, everybody knows that. And kind of, my, my story, like, really taking off on stage kind of starts at Poor Choices in Toulouse. Okay. Um, that's really where a lot of people found out who I was because I, when Poor Choices open, I mean, we were packed wall to wall both floors Monday <laughs> through Sunday for that place. Like, it was crazy like it was wall to wall both floors Monday to Sunday and mm -hmm. so I did like Mondays but it was like a Saturday like it was insane like yeah. and so I learned a lot doing that and I would do um, 
Thursdays at Toulouse, and that's really where I like came up with Thursdays at Toulouse. When were you at Toulouse? Because I probably have caught you then. Because oh, me yeah. and my me and my dudes used to be at Toulouse. So I was at Toulouse every Thursday from like 2017 till 20 or this year um, yeah. till yeah 2017 until 2017 2018 mm-hmm. early 2018 until. Probably like Jan. Nah, probably like I would say like March. Sometimes springtime this year. Okay. And I went to Voodoo Room. Okay. And so, but I was at Toulouse for a long time. And I would do like Sundays and some weekends. I mean, you probably saw me at Toulouse yeah. sometime. Yeah. Like I had to stop going to Toulouse, but you know, let's neither here nor there. They were, they were tripping. <laughs> they got six. Not, not on me. Not on me. But some, you know, a couple of my homies that I was with, dress code type shit. So like Toulouse was strict as fuck, bro. Super strict. But, I was gonna say like I don't really know, but then again, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's really kind of I guess like if you're not like. Sixth Street's one of those places, man. Like, there's really strict. It's it's really regular heavy. Like, mm-hmm. if you're not down there every day, you probably wouldn't notice that it's super regular heavy. Like, yeah. it's the same people every yeah, day yeah. of the week down there. You know what I'm saying? And they're gonna get away with a lot more. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna they're not gonna have like dress. It's it's so hard to like decipher it's the dress more code. Who you know? Though. Yeah, because like. There's people that'll come in and like even me sometimes I'm like damn they let them in wearing that like <laughs> like even if you know them I'm like damn yeah. dude like and it's not even there I mean it's everywhere you know what I'm saying it's just because there's times I'll go downtown and it's like I can't I mean like of course because I'm known it's like they they know me but it's like I'm like damn they actually let me in wearing this shit like I'll go to West sometimes I'm not like I'll go to bars where like they don't know me on West you know what I'm saying yeah. like, I didn't, they know me at certain bars on West but like I'll go to a bar like. I'm not saying anywhere, but like, and I'll get in, I'll be like, damn, like, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, so I don't know. It's weird, man. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it's just how you carry yourself as Big well, too. That's true. Like, that's true. Yeah, they, they pick and choose, yeah. man. Gang like, member looking. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, so, so you, you DJ in on six, man. How are the other DJs? I know you talked about many Mo, where the DJs like open arms to you, bro, with you not like being from here. Like, how, yeah. how, how's the DJ community? Uh, we're, we're we're really tight knit. Um, but yeah, it was pretty welcome, open arms for the most part. There was you know, there's some times we have haters and stuff like that, of course, because yeah. um, most of these guys, I mean, this is their baby. Most of these guys have been down here for longer than I've like. There's guys that are DJing now, still on Sixth Street, that have been DJing since I was in like first, second grade. So yeah. like, you know, what I'm saying like this is their shit. You know, what I'm yeah. saying. Um, and I was like new before I came in. New people, new DJs didn't just pop up on Sixth Street. Like they, it was very like they were like not letting people in. You know what I'm saying? Like I weaseled my way in, dog. Like it, like it took a lot of work. And even now, like <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people go and come and go in my four and a half years down there. Like a lot, and more people are starting to stick now. But I honestly feel like I have a big part of that. Like because we have a big group chat with all of us. Like mostly 6th Street DJ and some of the Rainy Street DJs, but oh, it's probably about, like, 20-something of us in that group oh, chat. Oh, shit. Um, but it's, like, when it, like they'll get kind of upset sometimes when I add people in there. I'm like, bro, like, this is, like, times are different. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to, like, when I meet a new younger DJ that I think's dope, mm-hmm. I'm going to add him. I'm going to bring him. I'm going to welcome so it's him. It's like a networking sort of a good chat. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm not going to gatekeep people. Bro, yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, because I'm like, there's enough money for all of us out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. always... I was put on by a lot of dope DJs, you know, guys like Cool Chris and Helly Ella, man. Like, people that, and they always taught me, like, if you're comfortable in your position and you're not scared of, like, somebody taking your job, you're always going to help the next person, you know what I'm saying? And um, so that's kind of the same philosophy I have now. Like, I'm always going to be trying to put on somebody if, because now that I'm in the position to be able to help other people, it's dope. It's a dope feeling to be able to help people, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and just keep the culture moving. I feel like the culture is changing a lot. And, the younger DJs are, there's a lot of dope DJs, you know what I'm saying? Not just, I'm just saying younger, like I'm included younger, like not, like age-wise and number you're, of years. You're vetted at this point, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like <laughs> definitely, personally. Yeah, definitely. yeah I, I mean, I would say I'm stamped at this point. But yeah, I mean. You, you're humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I busted my ass to get to this point. Of course. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And I practiced a fucking lot to get to this point. I don't practice anymore as much as I should, you know, but. Starting to practice more again at home, starting to find that creative juices again. So yeah. trying to always get to that new level. So, but like I said, at the same time, I'm kind of focused on like my bread and butters here right now. But at the same time, I'm focused on more now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because I feel like I've kind of, 
the the nightlife culture here in Austin is not really like my I mean I can do it but it, like my element of DJing like a lot of stuff that I do goes over their head in the club you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like literally like on six years I have to dumb down what I really want to do because like I'll do some shit and it just like it like you it doesn't simplify it. yeah it, it doesn't give, click with give them, me you know an example saying? bro like, because I, I I consider myself a you know a I'm, DJ I, yeah, hey 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 you said old mixes bro you type yeah. in neighborhood Nick on on SoundCloud bro we're looking hey, everybody hey, up today I got at least five stacks on each of my mixes bro there's, chill out there was a point there was a point where I tried to DJ too and I tried to chop and screw and I was like no nah, I give up hey, <laughs> I could not nah. I still can't chop and screw I mean I, yeah. I always say I'm gonna learn Cut, that catch it at the like, snap mm, it's just like I don't know I, that seems like it would be really dope to learn but like I don't know, that's not really my thing. Like, I don't even really listen to Chopped and Screwed music, so yeah. I, I don't know why I would really learn it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> like, What's something you've tried to play, though, that just, like, didn't get, like, this hard? I mean, it's a lot of stuff, dude. Like, I, I've kind of based my whole brand on Sixth Street, and, and Austin in general is, like, being the guy who plays, like, different shit, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, of course, I still play the same stuff that, like, the, the, the big hits, but, like, like, if you come hear me play, like, at Library on a Saturday night during peak hour, like, the time when, like, a lot of people are playing, like, the stuff, like, Dreams and Nightmares and stuff. I'm playing, like, Lovers and Friends by Usher, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I'm still, like, doing it the right, and they're, they're still getting an insane reaction from my, I use a term, like, like I said, I had to dumb it down. I always use a term, like, I, say, I call it just giving them Big Macs. I just give you, like, you just got to give people what they want all night, man. Just yeah. give, here's a Big Mac, here's a Big Mac, here's a Big Mac, here's a Big Mac, and, like, Cause I want to do all, I want to play all these like crazy remixes and like new shit sometimes or like just different shit that I hear like because I'm starting to travel more so I hear a lot of stuff that. So you want to put them on onto new new yeah new shit that, um yeah. and then just like more style of DJ like I, like when you go out of town man like if you go to like L A or somewhere like that man like they're really big on like quick mixing you know what I'm okay. saying like in and out of stuff like you know like. Say when I'm getting into like a hip hop set peak hour, like I'm not gonna play more than like thirty seconds of the song unless it's like a major hit. So you're like, like in and out with I'm in songs. and out, in and out, in and out. And sometimes like if you have the right crowd, they understand what's going on and like it can keep the energy going. But then sometimes they're just like, "Damn, bro, just play the song." Like I, don't, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I wanted to hear the third verse. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like I wanted to hear the very last verse of the song. So like, but then there's certain songs where like. You know that hit, so like I'll skip to that that last. You just version, jump you know into it. like like yeah. um, like no hands for example. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll skip straight to Wale's verse. Mm-hmm. You know I don't even play like I'll play Walker sometimes, but it I don't know. Different. It's like I said, I just feel like I've been going and seeing other DJs and like really killing shit in other cities. I'm like, damn, that is dope, and yeah. like it's a dope party and it's yeah. a dope vibe. And I'm like, I want to bring that here, and they're just like they're getting there, but they're not quite ready for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying like. They're finally starting to get like to the more open platform vibe, which is like, what I'm really trying to push on Sixth yeah, Street yeah. because Sixth Street is very like hip hop and Latin. That's mm-hmm. really it. Like, I'm trying to play like everything. I want y'all to like. I'm gonna play like some 2000s alternative, like 2000s rock. Like you want to get into f- everything. Be versatile. Some 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 41. You know mm-hmm. stuff like that. Or some uh, Fallout Boy. Yeah, I might play some like little you know, like sprinkles like EDM or just like rock or like, all types of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And people are starting to kind of open more up to that in Austin. I think it's because of all the people that are moving here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all mm-hmm. from all over the place where they expect different. And so that's why I feel like nightlife culture is kind of changing here because it used to be a point where, like, man, if you played one song that people didn't like, they were out. They were going to the next bar. Like, <laughs> have they were have gone. you seen the crowd change? Since? Oh, absolutely. It, over the next, like, the past probably really two years, like, right before – Right before COVID is when the crowd really started to change. But now, like, it's changing a lot. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can play, like, pretty open platform on a Saturday night it Makes now. it easier. Like, yeah, it's super dope. Um, and now people, like, out in an open platform club, you, you, you kind of want to, like, it's hard to balance. You want to balance the dance floor and the bar because you want to make money still at the end of the day. The mm-hmm. bottom line is making money. Like, mm-hmm. having a packed dance floor is cool and looks good on video. But are you making money? Exactly. Yeah. And so it's starting to get to that point in Austin where you can play one genre to get everybody lit on the dance floor, and then you flip it. Mm-hmm. You play something else, and so that crowd is going to go to the bar. The other crowd is going to come out and turn up now. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You're such, okay, it's crowd control. Uh. Yeah. And people are willing to, like, now we have such, like, a little bit more diverse crowd. They, like, they don't leave if, they, if you play one song they don't like. They're like, oh, all right, I know in, like, three, four songs he's going to play something else that I like, even though this isn't my shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Oh, trust, I might not. Like, they trust you. They trust you a little bit more, um, which is cool, man. Um, but you got to amp up and <laughs> ante up. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, it, 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 but like I said, I I have a good 
one thing that I try to be really good about is like if I have a residency, like a Friday or a Saturday residency, I really try to build it and like groom that crowd to like what I want to do in the room, like my own party. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I kind of really started to push the open platform thing in Poor Choices on Fridays and Saturdays. I was like, man, I'm so sick of playing just only hip hop and Latin all night, every yeah. night. Like it's boring. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's boring. Like I don't want to do yeah. that. And so it's kind of started pushing it more. And like now, like <laughs> it's funny on a Saturday, like one of the managers will be sitting next to me at library and I'll be like, fuck it, I'm gonna play this. Just wa I'll watch, watch this. I'm gonna play this song. Like, fuck, <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what's the most random shit you'd have never dropped in a set? Um, <sighs> <laughs> a couple years ago, I played that song Baby Shark during my set one time. You, no. hit, you hit Baby <laughs> Shark in a set. How did, how did that? What now, was what, that? Yeah, <laughs> like, what was so the reception? funny, like. The crowd, like the, all the, you could tell the everybody who has a kid, like the baby yeah, mamas and shit, because they were all singing. It. <laughs> all the baby mamas doing the dance and shit. <laughs> but my manager was not with the shit. The, oh, like the shit. manager was not with. It. He, he came, like shut like, that shit up. Yeah, he was like turn that shit off. I was like, bro, why? Um, but were they most, going crazy though? Yeah, yeah, yeah they were eating funny. it up. But like most recently, um, uh I like to. <laughs> uh, I have like a little routine that I'll do that I'll go from like the Lion King theme song to okay. like international players anthem okay. like it's kind of like a tone play type thing yeah um and it really catches people off guard mm -hmm. but i have this one really random edit that <laughs> is really fucking stupid but i love it um it's truth hurts by lizzo mm -hmm. okay but the beat is the office theme song Chill out, man. <laughs> I want to hear, hear how that sounds i wish i had my laptop <laughs> Yo. i wish i had my i'm mean, have it in my car but um but no, it's it's hilarious, dude. And, um, so that's really random, and like, and I'll throw it in sometimes. And like, yeah. uh, I was <laughs> probably about two weeks ago. Uh, the manager of the bar was sitting next to me because like they'll run the lights and stuff. Yeah. And I had loaded it up, and like he know he knows the song now because like I've played it a few <laughs> times, and like. I, I rarely second guess myself. Like normally, like that's one thing I try to like push myself to do is like if I feel like I should play a song, I'm gonna play it. Like I, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I'm gonna trust myself. But for some reason that night, I just like could not press play on the song. Oh, like, <laughs> like I loaded it up. Yeah. You kept pushing it off, pushing it off. I loaded it up and then I like deleted it, and ejected oh, it, took it out, <laughs> and then I loaded it up and then I took it out and I loaded it up and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And then I could just scratch it and I just stopped and then I played something else. And he like at the end of the night, the manager comes up to me, he's like. I've never seen you second guess yourself before. Oh, he's like, he's like, you should have played the song. He's like, it was the right time to play it. Like they would have yeah. went off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, I was like, I know. I, was like, I don't know why. I just hesitated. I was like, I didn't. I don't know. <laughs> How strict is uh, like just like management of clubs like like on the DJ right? Like as far as what they play, um, you know. I'm sure you didn't seen the tweets from people as far as like oh, DJs yeah. not playing local artists and shit. And it's like, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, I know it's a lot of politics, or you know what I'm saying? It's it, I don't know if it's like the man management's total control. I mean, they're really not too strict as long as you're playing like the same genre of the crowd that's at the venue. You know, most of the places on on especially in Sixth Street, um, they all um, how much I'm gonna say. They all kind of have their own vibe, and you know what I'm saying. Like we, as DJs, we all know kind of what we're expected to play when we go into certain places. Um, so they're not really gonna say much to you. And ooh, them are the yeah, <laughs> the, the, the seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, but I, I, um, I definitely build like when I, when I go somewhere, like they they trust me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm trusted. So like I'm. I can't remember the last time anybody's told me not to play something. It's yeah. it's, it's been, I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I low key kind of want to go and break so we can hear these mixes. I know, bro, bro. <laughs> um, Shit, what are what are some of the uh, some of the DJs? Because you say you've traveled around at this point and, and you go and check out other DJs that you're yeah. into. Who, who are some of the DJs that you look up to and or like? That are, you set to those standards that you want to be. Yeah, at. yeah, for sure. Uh, so definitely like a lot of the, like the OG guys that are from uh, like that. Uh, I don't know y'all if y'all are not into the really DJ world, but like the the DJ AM era. Oh, and of he course, was, rest yeah, in peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So you know AM. So like a lot of those guys, like the Vices and the Beat yeah. Breakers yeah. and the yeah. The we fashion. had rapper Rick on here. And he was in, he loved yeah. AM too. Yeah, yeah. Rap, Rick's a guy. That's the homie. Shout out Rick, man. Uh, but yeah, no, like all those guys and like right now, my favorite DJ is. <laughs> Uh, four colors Zach 
and then a conflict and his Instagram name is actually my favorite DJ. It's weird saying that. <laughs> but uh no, when I was in LA a couple months ago, man, mm-hmm. I saw Four Color Zach for the first time live and I was just like my mind was blown. Yeah. Like he's all I listen to like when I'm in the car now, like I'm listening to his mixes on repeat, like cause he's oh, just shit. so Four Color Zach is uh Red Bull Three Star World Champion, mm. which is like uh, Red Bull Three Star was a DJ battle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um so he's a world champion with that, and so like it's real, and it's crazy because now I thought about it the other day. I was like, my two favorite DJs are both Red Bull three style DJs, and I think it's because like those guys are really like to be able to win the Red Bull three style, like you got to be a top tier DJ. And I don't, Conflict didn't win, but he won like his regional one, and he got like second or third or in the in the in the, U, in the United States one. Yeah. But like those guys, those two guys are really good at like incorporating turntablist and battle routines into the club element like I, I noticed like when I listened to Zach I started noticing I'm like huh he's not just like like me I freestyle all night like I'm just playing like whatever comes into my mind next you know what I'm saying but like I, I started listening to his mixes more and I'm like I noticed I'm like these are blocks these are all routines you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying like because I can clearly tell when he's going from like one routine because you can tell like it starts and it's a string of like wordplay or tone play and it's really fucking sick and then it kind of mm-hmm. like chill for a second and then you can tell when there's another one starting and it took me a long like if you're if you're not a dj you're not gonna notice that you know what i'm saying but like me really studying him like details in it yeah me studying him i'm like all right i see what he's doing you know what i'm saying and it's kind of made me want to start doing that more because it's really like i imagine that could make like those guys are so creative and they do the dopest stuff dog like they (laughs) like they do the dopest routines Mm -hmm. and like transitions and it's just like crazy shit dog like i remember like Granted, so when we were in LA, it was for a DJ thing. So like the r- the room was probably eighty percent, eighty eighty to ninety percent DJs. Oh shit! And then it, we're we're at the highlight room. So like in Hollywood, like that's the place to be in Hollywood. It's like on Wednesday night they have like Sadiq at um at the highlight room. So you can like it's like a big R and B party. Yeah. And so everybody's there. You know what I'm saying? Drake, Chris Brown, all that shit. So oh, like. Shit. I didn't realize that till after we were there though. Like they were like, "Bro, you were at the place to be," which was crazy because I, I I knew something was up because like the, the on at the party the section next to us was like OT Genesis, oh, uh, shit. Mario the singer from like, um, mm-hmm. Too Short. Oh damn! Um, a few other people I can't remember who else, but um, yeah, it was really dope. But it was like Zach's set was so sick. I remember like very vividly like a point like looking around and like. Everybody was just staring at him. Like, nobody, like, everybody in their sections, everybody was like, they were staring at him like it was a concert. I've never seen anything like that at the club in my life. Like, everybody was just shook because of what he was doing. Like, he's going crazy. Yeah, and he does this one routine. (laughs) I can actually pull it up. He does this one routine where it's like lovers and friends, little John. Let me see if I can find it real quick for you. Um, While you find that, bro, how much Rimble did they drop in the club that night? How much what? Rimble, the artist. I'm not familiar. Not familiar? No. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm lost. What do you mean? Hey, no, he, he's, he's a rapper. He's a rapper. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? L.A., big in L.A. You know what I'm saying? Rimbo. Um, Never heard that name. Nah, Rimbo. Rimbo. Mm-hmm. You've heard the song. I know you're a DJ. I know you didn't heard. Uh, uh, fuck, I don't know what the song is. Has like the under uh, Undertaker chime in, unto- uh, touchable. Oh, okay, okay, but he raps over it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you never heard that, bro. I, I don't know. I don't think I have. Hey, hey, I'm telling you. All right, let me see. And this is this is uh, who who is this right here? You showing us? Well, let us hear. Uh, four colors. Zach. Okay. All right, so. I'll kind of give you an example of what I was talking about, like, just dope transitions in general, man, like, the, the creativity level that these guys have. So this is um, this is a transition that I really like right here. Let's see. Okay. All right, here we go. Can we throw them the ox? Do you have one for this? For you, got the... da- you got a dangle? The dongle? The dongle. <laughs> dangle, you know. Uh, can we go on breaks so you get your laptop? What's up? Can we go on breaks and we get the laptop? Yeah. I'm done with that. Let's go break his own. For real, for real. I'm eager to hear the mixes, though. Yeah. Hey, we'll be right back Yo. after maybe a commercial or a mix. I don't know. We don't, we don't know. Yo. Bro. How are we coming back in? We're back already, baby. Sheesh. We've been back. Sheesh. Uh, yeah, so better. definitely if you're listening or tuning now, 
you are probably coming back from a commercial or just a bleep. So I'm sorry, I don't. I, I'm not as creative as I want to be. Maybe ever whip up some little video that he we can play. Cause ever Calderon reach out to him, he could do music, audio, video. Uh, you can pay him extra, and he'll do your concerts. Yeah. Uh, he can build websites, uh, promotional content, uh, and he's single, ladies. So yeah, tap in, my boy. What, what, what's your sign? What's your sign? He's a Virgo. Uh, I mean Virgo. He's a Virgo lady. <laughs> <laughs> Get at him, ladies. What's your ad name, bro? Ever J. Calderon. You need to shorten that up. But Ever J. Calderon, <laughs> reach out to him. You will not be disappointed. Huh? Mine's Flaconimo. Short and sweet. Short, Short and sweet. sweet. Keep it simple, man. <laughs> yeah, you Keep have to. But reach out to him for work or for love. But we are back with Steezy D. Yeah, we're back. Because I wanted to hear what goes on his head because... You know, one thing I've always like wanted to do, but I feel like it's too rude, is um, go up to people because I like to keep AirPods or headphones in yeah. at all times. You know, so I've always wanted to, like to start. I've always wondered what people are playing, like whether we're at the gym, yeah, driving, That's running, whatever. You know, I never like really thought about that. Yeah, before. like you, you can go and ask anybody, like, hey, what song are you listening to? Like it's it's gonna be probably something different, or maybe mm-hmm. something you like, you know. And that's always interest, uh, piqued my interest. But uh, shit, what are we going into? Your mixes or what you were uh, referencing? No, so it's kind of like the stuff that I listen to. So kind of we're talking about like where I get like my inspiration from, uh, and DJs that I look up to and stuff like that. Like I have different DJs kind of look that I look up to for like different realms of stuff. You know, um, a guy that I like to like, like I said, I'm really big into like mashup DJs, like the 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 real like just more mashup stuff. So I mean, just simple stuff like this. Like I'm really into like really creative transitions. Like this is dude J Star. He's from New York. Um, like king of fucking like Latin music and like in New York right now, like he's killing it, like killing the Latin scene, and he's really, um, just that guy. But he's really dope DJ, like you know what I'm saying. He still is like really dope, puts together routines and kind yeah. of incorporates that to instead. So this is uh, um, when his like most club killers, most recent club killers mixes, and I listen to this mix at least once a week, like when I'm in like the gym or something like that, because it's just like. Super dope transitions, and, like, he's really good at about adding, like, skits into his mixes and stuff, which is really fucking sick. That's interesting. Um, so, yeah, I'll get into it, and I'll play this first one. And just, like, a little snippet out of this one. This is a transition that I really like. Here, it's, like, stringing, like, two, three songs. <laughs> It's cut to nasty. That's name J Star. Yeah. And then, so like in this next one, they can have that skit that I was telling you about. That's why. If I were to hear that in the club, uh, I'd get so high. Like, oh, <laughs> And what they do is like they make their own edits of it. Like you make your own remix and you, and you know take it out and put it in. Yeah. So yeah. Man. I promise. She won't let me see my son. That's what I'm talking about. Why you gotta steal my car? Your car? Yeah, it's my car. If it ain't my car, then give me back the gauge I put on there. The ten windows I paid for. So yeah, just like super creative stuff like that. Somebody that uh, I'm trying to like find her name real quick because I follow her on Instagram and she's a dope DJ. Um, what's her, she she mixed in the uh, Why are you being weird? <laughs> <laughs> that shit okay. that shit came out so live and I have to find her out because I I'm like I just want to give her a shout out. See, yeah, I'm trying to like um. Uh, See, I'm, like, learning, like, that's kind of, like, the level I'm trying to get you right now is, like, yeah. trying to incorporate more stuff like that into my set. So, like, and like I said, these are these are, these are are guys that do, like, come from, like, battle backgrounds and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So, like, it's, that, that's just they their nature. Like, as hell. They, they can't just play a song normally. Like, they mm-hmm. have to, like, make every song 
their own. Like they make an edit for every single song. Like they're gonna play it. Like they have their specific edit, and like it could be like one song on their Serato, but they just have to press play on that one song, and they've put this song, this song. It's like they can hit a cue point, and go from song to song to song, but it's literally on one track, and it, it, it it's technical stuff that just like. The no, a non DJ would never understand, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's stuff that I'm still learning. It's just, it's oh, just, sure. just about I think like it's on top tier shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like like really like when you're like really like like on top of your yeah, shit. Yeah, like it's different. It's it's a different level of DJing. And, but, and that first guy was J Star. Yeah, J Star. He's from New York. Uh, gotcha. Really big, like Latin. I mean, open platform DJ, but really known in the Latin scene right now and stuff like that. Gotcha. So this is Four Color Exact, the one that I was telling you about that has, like, just the, <laughs> the sickest shit. The one that was in the club, like, in L.A. and, yeah. like, had everybody shook. And, like, I had never seen him live. And he started his set with the – so Apollo was there, which is Waka Flocka's DJ. Mm. Uh, and he was, like, right next to the booth. And I didn't know he was there until, like, the end of the night when I went over there and we all started chilling and shit. Um, but he started his set with a Waka set, like, a nastiest string of, like, five Waka songs. And he, like, Damn. he transitioned in and out of them all within, like, 45 seconds. Damn. But it, when, it, when he did that, I, like, probably on, like, the third song, I looked over at my homie. I was like, yo, this is about to be crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is, like, he's about to go stupid. <laughs> like, and he, he did. Uh, let's see. I got five. I saved it. It's at 14 minutes left. It's going to make it really awkward because it's... it's this Mixcloud is set up so much different on your phone, on your phone mm-hmm. versus on the full computer. On the full computer, so like on the, it shows the time differently. You know what I'm uh, saying? Okay. Which is my fault. I should have saved the uh, <laughs> actual time, but all I did was save how much time was left <laughs> instead oh, of the shit. actual time. Uh, let's see here. That DJ I was talking about. Her name is uh, Oria. Oria. Oria? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'm she saying that. Awesome. Yeah, I think so. Like this, let me see. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, crunk, that's crunk as fuck, bro. I heard that. I was like, damn. So I believe that. it's at the right part on here. So let's see. All right, let's see. So this is Four Colors, Zach. So he has this transition that he does. Yeah, this is it. So he has this transition that he does. And mind you, the first time I I hadn't heard him do it because I didn't really listen to his, like mm-hmm. Zach's mixes that much and stuff before. Um, because when I saw Zach, it was always like in, like battles, and I would watch his like live sets and that. So I had never heard this specific transition. So my first time hearing it was in the club. I didn't know he's been doing it for like probably a couple years now, since at least twenty nineteen, because this is when this mix came out. Okay. Yeah. So it's the lovers and friends thing, and so mind you, in L.A., Little John is in the club when this happens. Mm. Oh, okay. And so. What he does, you'll hear the transition. So like little John comes up to the DJ booth and he like stops and I have like I can play the the video clip on my phone and he's like he explains like the whole situation. He's like the the whole butt fucking for a long time and lovers and friends. Yeah. All right, so he, it's a whole <laughs> word you'll hear. Yeah, I mean before our big guy w- walks up on this stage and <laughs> y'all, it's on. I gotta get a little sensual. I need you to listen to the message real quick. Right. We had to do it again. Right? Don't do the singing of these ladies, man. Oh, oh, I'm saying, like, hearing this in the club, bro, it caught everybody off guard. Everybody in the club had their phone. I've been knowing you for a long time. But fucking never crossed my mind. I've been knowing you for a long time. But fucking never crossed my mind. I've been knowing you for a long time. But fucking, but fucking, but fucking, but. But it's just like I just love the whole like the whole butt fucking wordplay yeah. routine. <laughs> and so he does that routine and little John comes up to the booth as he's doing it and stops him like mid routine and he starts explaining the lyrics from like oh, what he was shit. talking like, about. That's not what I was talking about, bro. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, you should be able to, my phone's loud as shit, so you definitely would hear it. So this shit is funny. <laughs> Everybody in LA knows it 
Oh shit! That's Yo, that is that's crazy as fuck, man. To see that, to like be there that when that shit happens. Alone, yeah, yeah, no, it was really cool. And actually, Little John's a really dope dude. So like, um, got to chill with him at the after party from that and all that okay. stuff. So like, the after party. So it, it was the whole hotel was rented out. Um, by this um, guy named Suji who owns Scam Artist. It's a booking agency, for mostly DJs, but he also books for like some artists like Black China and like. Uh, Amber Rose and other artists, some artists, I can't remember uh, the other actual like artists, but uh, some like really notable artists. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like an A&R for like Atlantic or something. I, I have no idea what label he's an A&R for, but um, it was his birthday party. So he rents out the whole hotel. Yeah. And so the after party is in a suite that's on like the ninth floor. And so we leave upstairs and... Um, I don't know how my friend is uh my friend's a rapper and he's from out here and he, but he like was out in LA for a while like networking and shit and, like he's really good at like like making people like think that he's like somebody you know what I'm saying like he's really Finesse fucking him. yes his finesse game is a1 dog <laughs> like like I've never seen to like bro like it was, these parties were really hard to get into like if you didn't like know somebody like it was $100 to get in oh, shit. yeah and so like I um he had called me and I didn't answer the call because I was like trying to like I went to my room to change and I was going up to the party and I didn't answer because I didn't know he was there already and um I, I walk out the elevator and he's standing there and I'm like what the fuck like <laughs> I'm like how did you even get in here bro he's like uh, look it doesn't matter like, <laughs> <laughs> I found a way <laughs> um but later that night after the club closes like there's a long ass line to get to the elevator to go back down like earlier in the night, he had like made like friends with the security guards and like in, in the club and stuff like that. It's like, bro, we would be walking around and like he'd be like, "Hey, man, escort us back to our section." <laughs> oh, shit. And like the, the security guard would like clear everybody out the way and like escort us to our section. Damn, oh. I'm like, bro, what the fuck did you hey, tell them, bro? Like <laughs> Drake's cousin. Yeah. Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, but so we're leaving, and there's like a super long line to get in the elevator. I'm like, yo, it's about to take mad long. He's like, no, I got this. I got this. Watch. He goes up to him. He's like, yo, can you get us like around the line? All that. They're like, yeah, yeah, I got you. And uh, so we like we skipped the whole line. Like all these people were pissed, bro. Cause like we, we walk around the front, and, like just come like there's like a velvet rope blocking off the elevator, and like the line goes this way, and like they are they're they're only letting security's only letting him in this way. But we come from this side, and everybody's like, "What the fuck?" Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck are they? Like, and I'm just like on my phone. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shit, ask about us. I need, to, I need to be with him in LA, man. <laughs> Shit, they're gonna get us in everything. Shit. And so we get down to the lobby of the hotel because that's how you have to go. You have to go all the way down to the lobby to get to a different elevator to go back up inside the hotel. Um, because we were on the rooftop at the pool. Um. And we get down to the lobby, and little John and them are like waiting to get in the elevator. And it's just like him and a couple other my homies and stuff like that. And we end up in the elevator with them. And so we just end up like chilling with him in the all night and shit like that. And he's cool as a fucking fan. And like yeah. some random shit, but at the after party, like Alexis Texas was there. Oh, and fucking, shit. Uh, like who else? Uh, that I don't know the other girl's name, but it was really random. Like I was outside on the patio smoking with the homies, and they're like, "Shut up, Alexis Texas." And I was like, "What?" Like, <laughs> I was like, she? "I was like, why is Alexis Texas at a DJ convention, bro?" Like, <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I was like, "I was like, this is a DJ convention, and Alexis Texas is here." I'm like, that is fun. Shout, <laughs> Shout out, Alexis. Shout out, Alexis. But uh, let's see if I can find this next uh, that other um, transition I was telling you about. It was, it's a little bit later. Let's see. It's at one. You ain't gotta I'm gonna need a link to this mix because this shit was crooked. Yeah, well. this shit sounds yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Zach's like definitely. Uh, oh my! I got off my hotspot. That's why it's not working. He's crazy. Like his 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 mind is like. When you listen to his mix, you're like, this dude's mind just operates on a different wave. Uh, you know, I my phone with a voice. It's it's I didn't even realize I could see the time down here. <laughs> oh shit. That, Slow motion's my shit, bro. Mario is so fucking stupid, man. This whole time I've been looking like trying to figure it out up here and there's like on by wavelengths. Oh yes, go down. Hover. There's a whole timer down here. Oh shit. 
Gotta get a little sensual. And let him know who go, no, go, no, you If you oh, shit. Time to stew soft for me. So it's a Like a skip, like a tiny bit of like a tiny bit of 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 a tiny so this is this is like the transition right here. Like shit is nasty. Oh, these guys are like they're nasty. Like they're like their their That's, minds work on a different I level. And like, I would start fighting in the club. Bro. Yeah, I'm saying like man. hearing shit like that in the yeah. club, bro. You're my like, mug would have been on me, bro. <laughs> bro like, like hearing that shit in the club. Like when yeah. I heard, I wish like I could find his walk and transition. Like his hit that his open how he opened his set. Like I wish that was in one of his mixes. It's like I want to relive that moment again because I was just like I remember that five minutes of that walk. I was just like yo, like that like. Bro, what just happened? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, just like, I mean, it was like his most basic hits. Like, you know, he's his first song that he started his set with was 50k. Mm. And when I heard that, I was like, that song. Yeah, dog. That and it, song. it completely switched the vibe from the DJ that was playing before him. And like, when I heard the drop, I was like, Oh shit, mm -hmm. 50k. And like, I was with a couple of my homies, and my one homie, like, they didn't really know that. Like, they're not really like, well, I, One of them probably knew it, but the other two, I don't think. They're really too hip to it. it. Yeah, they weren't too hip to it. Um, but they were like, what the fuck is this song? Like when it dropped, because you know when 50k, like 50k is hard. 50k hard. for it. Like that shit, that shit, is that shit so like hard. they were like, what is this song? I was like, it's 50k by Walk. And then like he went into like um to Grove Street and mm. then he went into like um some older like walk uh like clap. There's a house party going on. Like like uh, yeah, like, like he he when he DJs he treats it like a house party. You know what I'm saying? So like he just rocks that shit. And so like I've been trying to incorporate more like cool shit like that into yeah. stuff here. That's what I was, what I was talking about. Like the stuff that kind of goes over their heads here. You yeah, know what that's I'm what I'm saying. Like, I, that's what I understand like what you mean. Like, that yeah, because this like it's a variety of music. It's all club music, but it's like he's jumping from like you yeah. were saying, like some old school, some new shit, some early two thousand. But like but when it's the, still crunk. But when the, the right ear catches it, bro, like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. But like it's just like the crowd here, they're like they don't want to hear all that shit. Nah. You know what I'm saying, but like when you, that's what's really dope to play for crowds like that, to play for like DJ crowds or like to play for like, and really like, dude, like West Coast, like in like West Coast, you like they that's the like they want to hear shit like that in yeah. the club. You know what I'm saying, like. I used to like use like a lot of intros. Like with DJs, when it, we, we a lot of our songs are like eight bar intros that we have. It makes it really easy for you to transition in and out. You know what I'm saying? And I was going out there, man. I'm like, bro, they do like like one of my favorite DJs that I'm like fucking with right now, especially like killing in the hip hop scene is Night Train. Um, he's boss's DJ. Mm. Um, but just he's like he's the like guy in LA for for hip hop right yeah. now. He's like 27, like 28, something like that. Mm. Like, but he's like. He's the guy for hip hop. Like he DJs at Sadiq on Wednesday. Um, that party I was telling you about where everybody's there. Like last week, the video was fucking nuts, dog. Like everybody and their mom was there. I was like, bro, that's crazy. And it's an all R and B party, which is dope. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like in mm -hmm. L A. Like, well, Hollywood. I don't know. Hollywood is like very like like that. Like there's like the the P H, which is like a very like hip hop. That's like one of the most notorious hip hop places in the country. You know what I'm saying? It used to be Playhouse, but now it's called PH since it closed and reopened. But I don't know. It's just a different style of yeah. DJing. And like, I noticed like when when he DJs, like, I'll be like, all right, no, I'll notice like he'll just use like the regular version and he'll just drop it in on like, uh, let me, I'll show you for example. Instead of like playing, I'll, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let me put on my Serato. 
So as opposed to a Man, I want to go to the club now. Shit. <laughs> shit, I'm going tonight. It, oh, shit. Where, is there some spots in Austin that where we can catch that type of vibe? Like, that you would suggest people to go to? Because, obviously, 6th Street is not going to catch this type of environment. Uh, if you want to hear a really dope hip-hop DJ, I mean, it's really clear. But, of course, like, Hella Yellow. Like, hearing his yeah. set dog, like, we were, I was chilling with him in Dallas this weekend. That's, like, my OG, my brother. Like, yeah. But, like, if you want to hear a nasty hip-hop set, like, he is like he Killed fucks it. it up, dog. Like like he has that style of DJing, like that quick mixing, like that energy. So I know what I was talking about. Like with DJs, we have these what's called A bar intros, right? And like I said, it's just made for transitioning. It makes your transitions way easier. So it's literally just it's just the instrumental for eight for eight bar eight okay. or si- sixteen bars or eight bars. Like okay. it's just and then it eventually goes into the song, you know what I'm saying? It eventually drops into like tones and chew me on some hot nigga. Eventually the song drops. I don't do that anymore. So, like, I saw, like, like them do it. So, now, like, when I play, like, Hot Nigga by Bobby Shmurda, I'll, um, I'll, I'll, like, cut out the song I'm playing, and I'll just drop it from this part right here. Like, I, I, like I'll just cut the song I'm playing before that. I might, like, say something on the mic or something. I might not. And then I'll just drop it right here. I'll just... Jello beats. Ah, ah. Okay. Because I've learned that, like, when you, when you, like, back to that term earlier, like, giving people Big Macs, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes I th- you're depriving the crowd of a moment by playing that intro version because the intro versions normally don't drop the same, mm. and so there's certain songs you're depriving them of a moment. It takes a little longer to get to it, or not it takes a little bit longer, but it just doesn't have the same impact. You know what I'm okay, saying? It kind of goes back to what, like that rant I was going on on Twitter today when I was pissed off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it, it's about giving it to them the right way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I listened to them, and they were like, "Man, like they were talking about the song Act Up' by City Girls, right? Mm-hmm. For this, for the past since it came out, I've always played the intro version." Nitrogen was like, "I don't even have an intro version on my laptop," and I was like, "Damn, that's crazy." And he's like, "He's like, it's, it's one of those songs like you're depriving them of a moment if you don't drop yeah. it on the one, so they can get that that feeling that dun." So like now when I drop it, I do the same thing. I just drop it from right here, just. Like, it's always going to hit. Because when they hear that, dun, right they go crazy. Ah, they get out their phones, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, it it creates the moment. I was yeah. like, right, I'm starting to, so I, so I've been changing my DJ set a lot the past, like, couple months, you know, okay. just to better the experience for everybody, you know what I'm saying? That's I'm interesting to, because it, it seems more and more that you go into it and dive into it. it, it becomes more and more obvious how much of an art it is. Yeah, there's there's so many layers to it, you know, and it's like, I'm still at a very, like, minimal tier, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'll do, like, a lot of scratching now. And, like, even, like, my homies that knew me, like, a year ago, like, that I knew, like, I couldn't really scratch that well. And, like, they'll hear me now. They're like, what the fuck? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, I don't know, dude. Like, you know, it's crazy. Like, I don't practice, bro. Like, yeah. like I don't. Like, I don't practice scratches. Like, when I learn scratches, I learn it on my slower nights in the club. Like, mm. on, like, my Monday nights or, like, my Wednesday nights when it's slower, that's when I learn new shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when I practice new transitions and when it's only a few people in the club and it's not really going to matter if, like. It hits or not. Yeah, if it doesn't hit. Um but no, I'm like, I tell him like, but if, I, if I actually like practiced scratching at home, dude, I'd be like, the, I would be nasty right now. But yeah. like, I also, I also didn't practice at home a lot because I don't like scratch, like learning scratches on controllers. Like I prefer to learn them on like real turntables. Okay. And I just bought my own pair of like real turntables for the first time, which yeah. is really cool. Like, like, I mean, I've had controllers, but I've never owned real turntables. Yeah. I didn't get Technics, but <laughs> I got PLX 1000s, which are like the new generation of Technics, but. I do want to get some techniques, man, but they're just really expensive if you're going to find them in good condition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just got to steal on mine on, on my Pioneer turntable so I couldn't turn it down. Nice. Man. Yeah, man. That's the kind of like the technical aspect of DJ that I was telling you guys about, man. But that's that with the, the little creativity realm, yeah. I guess, that we were going into with it. I like that. Yeah. That definitely got me hooked. Like, uh, I've always enjoyed, like, DJ and I, like obviously like as we said uh, DJ AM and obviously rapid rig and just the whole creativity that comes along with it like even for example like the uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the soul section and yeah. boiler room yeah absolutely that whole vibe is I want to do a boiler room so bad bro man. I've been wanting to plan that for the longest we just gotta find a right way to do it but I mean Joaquin and them are doing a good job too just yeah. killing it in, like their way here in Austin but shit yeah that would be dope here in Austin yeah dude um, that's actually kind of I don't want to say too much but I'm kind of like planning out kind of want to kind of want to do my own part like that kind of like walking is like new wave you know yeah but um kind of a little 
different, you know what I'm saying? Kind of just my more realm, and so I can do more stuff like that and yeah. just play, like... Because even, like, Joaquin's a sick-ass DJ. Yeah. Um, disgusting, dude, and his 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 music selection is nasty. Mm. Um, but like I said, we're all different DJs. Since the Easter. <laughs> yeah. We all have different tastes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and so I kind of want to start my own kind of party like that where I can just, like, play whatever the fuck I want, dog. Like, the shit that I... Everything that I don't have to play on a regular basis, and it's only gonna be like a once a month type party. Okay. Um, and I've really got my inspiration from that, from like those parties, like that mix that I can send that mix to you. But the mix I showed you, uh, Four Color Zach, it's a mix called the Do Over, and they've been doing it for actually. I might. I'm trying to sneak out to LA actually on the 24th for the 15th end of year, oh, the sure. 15th year anniversary for it. Um, but it's a really dope party because they treat it like a house party. Um, and those DJs, they just play whatever, and it's just like all the dopest, all the night. dopest sets, dude. Like just like you know, what I'm saying, just the dopest of sets. And I really want to bring like something like that to Austin, like something that's not weekly. You know, what I'm saying like once a month type shit, mm-hmm. like yeah, exclusive, type. exclusive. You know, I'm probably gonna start Man. in like I'm trying to find like a more intimate place that probably holds like because I don't expect to draw. 150 people on the first party, you know what I'm saying? So I'll probably get like a venue that was like, No, we'll be there, bro. Hey, I'm, I'm for real, I'm, yeah. Real. So I'm probably gonna try like to find like a little intimate space, probably like 50 to 100 people, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Started smaller because I, th- I think dope parties like that really, if you start them in that real in- intimate element, man, how did hip hop start? Like, how did hip hop start? Yeah, yeah dog, in basements and exactly, shit, man. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. so yeah, man, it's like, and I want to be able to bring in friends that also have a dope taste because I have a lot of dope DJ friends yeah. that have a lot of dope shit that like. We we can't play it on Sixth Street, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, or can't play it at normal gigs. And there's a there's a just I mean like like with Joaquin's New Wave, there's a lot of people here who want to go out, but when they don't want to go to like Sixth Street or Rainy yeah, Street or all that shit, and then they don't want to hear all the other shit that's being played. They want to hear like just the dope shit, you know what I'm saying, like. But it's all, all the dope cuts like, right now. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I want to play like be able to play all genres, like oldies, and especially like I had like so much fun in Dallas this weekend, Friday and Saturday, where I DJed at because it's like a, um, it's like more of like a, uh, it's a big concert venue outside. It's huge, um, and it's like, it's a really older crowd. It's all adults. It's not it's not kids. It's all like probably thirty would be pushing it. Like I would say like thirty five, forty and up. Like okay. So an older crowd, and it was, sure. yeah, and it was really cool to get to play for that crowd, because I got to just play like, all types of old cuts and oldies, and yeah. just all types of dope music. I was like, man, I want to throw a party where I can play all types of shit just like this, because like, there are, there are, there's people our age who fuck with that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, mu- there's, there's music heads out there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. vinyl collectors, and I have a lot of friends on, like, Twitter and stuff, and like, I'll, I'll kind of, like, hint at it every once in a while, and, like... I watch like even though like I'm very like in the downtown Austin scene. I watch what's going on with other parties yeah. and what what types of parties people are going to. You know what I'm saying? And kind of what's dope and like what's going on in other cities. You know, like my friend has a party like that out in um out in Santa Monica, in Cali, and it's a monthly party. Man, it's just like they bring in dope DJs who just play vibes all night. You know what I'm saying? And that's like. That's so. I think that shit's sick to me, dog. Yeah. Because you don't you don't have shit like that it's, here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, more intimate. It's more like on a even if you don't acknowledge or understand the music that's being played, it's on that tab. Like you said earlier, like you you being put onto new music, yeah. new wave, and it's just it's a vibe. You yep. know. And it's really like not even like new shit, but it's like playing like all the like the dope cuts, like the Catronadas, or just like deep cuts and deep shit. cuts, dog. Like or just like just like. R and B throwback vibes, you know what I'm saying? Just like all, everything, dog. Like, cause like, like a, a song I'm obsessed right now is like um, "Ready or Not" by the by the Fugees. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, and, "Ready or Not." <laughs> yeah. Um. Or um. What other Lauren Hill? Am I so obsessed with um, the. God, what's the damn song's name? Shit, something from the Misunderstanding. I'm I'm assuming. Something from what? Cause she only had well, she had yeah, two albums. That- one solo and then one with the Fuji. Yeah, just one with the Fuji's. Yeah, it's a it's one of the Fuji's ones. Mm-hmm. The score? Well, that's I know that's the album. Killing name. me softly. Killing me. Okay. Okay. So I've been like super obsessed with that song recently, and like you can't play that. Like, I can't. I can't really play that out. It's hard you know to what I'm play. Saying? Out. Like I wanted to throw a party where I can play like all types of shit like that. And that's that's really how like the do over is based. But like that's grown into something that they. It's global now. Like, they yeah. throw them everywhere. Tokyo, Hawaii, yeah. like, all over the place. You know what I'm saying? And they're huge crowds now, like, like thousands of people. But it started from a basement, like, like a, a small, intimate venue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I feel like Austin is a city where something like that could thrive. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If, if it's done the right way. I mean, like. As a creative hub, it keeps growing and growing. So it has yeah, potential for that. Absolutely. More, for sure. Absolutely, man. I feel like I've just built enough of a following where I could, like, 
And I have a lot of friends who are into shit like that, and they have friends that are into shit like that. So it would be also helping me, like, branch into a new following, you know, at the same yeah. time. Meeting a lot of dope new people, making new friends, Because you've like already that. been like, expanded uh, alone just from yeah. being from 60, because you've already been able to travel, right? Yeah. You've been to, to uh, Vegas, L.A.? Or, uh, I haven't or DJed haven't in Vegas yet, yet, but or L.A., but um, soon... Soon, mm-hmm. LA is a place that I'm not. I'm not, I still don't know if I'm ready to DJ in LA because <laughs> yeah. the thing. The thing is with LA, like, especially like, well, it depends where I would be at in LA. If I'm at an open platform place, that's cool. You know, I could do that any day of the week, um, or a Latin place, I could do that any day of the week. Um, but hip hop club, I, I'm not ready to do a hip hop club in LA. You know what I'm saying? Because in LA, like, it's high expectations. Yeah, dog. Like, um, and they expect you to have like, if something came out. If it's a Friday night and it came out last night on a Thursday, they expect you to have it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If it's Saturday and it came out Friday, they expect you to have it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If it came out this morning, they expect you to have it. Like, yeah. um, because it's a, it's an industry driven city, and so Hollywood is very like, anytime in the club, there's always somebody who's somebody there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so the music culture in Hollywood is just so far ahead of it, and it's, I mean, it's, it's a very they play a lot of L.A. shit. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it that 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 hasn't made it out of L.A. yet. You know what I'm saying? And or it's been out for a long time and just never made it out of L.A. Yeah. And we don't know about that out here. And like L.A. is a tough city to DJ in for hip hop DJs. Like a lot of hip hop DJs don't make it in L.A. Like there's like five guys running all of L.A. for hip hop. Oh wow. Yeah, in that big of a city, like. <laughs> Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, it's a tough city to really fucking get into. Yeah, so, so so swinging it back to Austin though, bro. Do you uh do you stay tuned to like the local acts here? I try. Okay. Not as much as I should. Um, I'm uh not, not, I don't as much as I should. But of course, I do like all the homies. You know, like like fucking vintage, of course, and then Teddy and all the homies and all that. Mm. But for the most part, not as much as I really should. You know what I'm saying? But also like. <laughs> At the same time, like, I try to explain to them, like, there's not much that, like, I can do for you guys. Like, I listen to a lot of you guys, you know what I'm saying? But as far as, like, helping you by playing you, there's not a whole lot I can do for a lot of you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's all love, and most of them understand that. And the ones that do have music that I can play, they know I'll play it, you know what I'm saying? But, like, Vintage, bro, like, that's my brother. He doesn't expect me to play any of his shit because he doesn't make club music, and he knows that. He'll say that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, I mean, it's kind of thing. But, yeah, I'm tapped into with it, like, I try to keep an eye on it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm busy, so, and I really don't. My attention mainly goes to DJing and fishing, honestly. Like, if, it, yeah. if it's not, if it doesn't have to do with those two things, I'm pretty. That's your balance. I'm yeah. not really focused. Like, I'm really don't know what's going on with much. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm sure you get, you get contacted a lot, though, by artists, right? To like play shit? Not as much, not by people here. Okay. It's more like random ass people hitting me up on like in my email or like on Instagram and shit like that. Mm. Like, I don't even really get hit on Twitter, but no, nah, I don't really get hit up for music that much, man. It's just like every once in a while, like somebody come up to me in the club, but no, nah, people don't really hit me up for to trying to send me music and shit like that. Yeah, for yeah. when they hit you up though at the club, this is a question from Ever that he asked. <laughs> and I, I asked you to wait a little bit because I got you, bro. I got you. What was the question again? Ever? How whenever people come and try to ask a request music. What does it take for for a stranger that you do not know for you to play a song that they want if it isn't completely ass? So it depends, honestly, because um, can I get another, uh, another oh, yeah. thing? Um, so my my whole deal is I typically only take requests up until midnight. I typically won't take another request after midnight. It's yeah. got to be unless you're like throwing. If you want me to take a request after midnight, it's got to be like minimum a hundred dollars, like minimum, okay. like minimum. I'm, I'm people, not, people pay it every once in a while. Yeah, people, 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 people pay it. Forty five seconds of the song for a hundred dollars. If they pay, if they give me a hundred dollars, I'll typically be nice and I'll typically play like at least like of like two verses of it. Okay, like play like half the song or something like that. Okay, or if it's a good song, I'll play the whole song because like, sometimes people request a song for a hundred dollars and I'm like, that's not like what. That's a song I would probably play already. Yeah. Like, so but if you're gonna pay, you to it. yeah. So if you're gonna pay me a hundred dollars, fuck it. I'll just play the right? whole. I'll just play the whole thing, bro. I'll, go to the, I'll go to the bathroom or something like that, bro. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> bathroom break a hundred dollars. I'm gonna take a piss. That's live. What's What's the wildest request you've gotten? Oh, uh, for sure. Uh, it was probably like a month ago. Um, what the hell is this song, dog? I was DJing at library on a Saturday night, and. <laughs> This dude comes up to me. It's probably like, uh, am I not on the Wi-Fi no more? It's probably 
creeping up on peak hour, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know I have this song, because I just... You had to, like, download it on the spot type shit? I didn't play that shit. (laughs) 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 Like, nope. Uh, (laughs) Uh, Was it this song? No, it was... It was ever. I think it was it definitely was ever. What? <laughs> Would you ask for system over down or what? Lincoln <laughs> Park. <laughs> was it? It was this song, "Drops of Jupiter" by Train. Oh, what the fuck? What bar was it at? Library. Oh shit! Yikes. Uh, he asked for that, and then he asked for. It's a Radiohead song, but I don't know why it's not. Creep. <laughs> I, I think it was Creep, bro. But. Uh, I don't know why it's not popping up on my like, laptop. Like, bro, wait, we're not fully gentrified yet. <laughs> <laughs> the fir- yeah, but he asked for that, and I was like, bro, I'm not playing that. And then he asked for Creep, and I was like, bro, are you serious? Are you dead ass right now, bro? Like, like, What would it have taken for him to get you to play, like, how much? Oh, like 500. Oh, okay. Fine. Like, yeah, yeah, like, because <laughs> <laughs> there's no way, bro. Like, <laughs> like, um, there's, yeah, there's no way that would happen, dog. Like, um. I don't take bad requests. Yeah. <laughs> man has taste. Yeah. Uh, and especially like at library, typically like on a, on a Saturday night, man, like there's going to be somebody next to me running the lights. So it kind of works as a, def- as a defense barrier. Yeah. Because they'll try to come up to the side of the DJ booth because okay. I'm like elevated. Yeah. And so they'll try to come around to the side and like try to like come up into the booth, but there's always somebody blocking it. Yeah. And they know like to just be like to not entertain this shit. Like they'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell them blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. But it's just like, <laughs> If it like the the managers like they wouldn't even tell me like they'll just be like no nah, he doesn't take requests and uh, but the the light guy like he's like he's nicer but like I, he does the same thing that I do to people like if I'm chilling with the DJ and like somebody come up to me they'd be like hey can you ask him to play this song like I'll just kind of like look over in their ear and I'll just be like just nod your head and pretend like I'm telling you something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's hilarious. hilarious. And he does the same shit to me. Like, if they won't leave him alone, but like, dog, like, <laughs> some people are just really fucking like, <sighs> I forget what song it was. It wasn't a bad song. So I took the request a couple weeks ago and it was like 20 bucks. But the thing is with me, like, if I tell you I'm going to play it, and especially if I take your money for it, I'm going to play it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Be patient. Be patient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest pet peeve is people who like stand right next to the DJ booth and wait. <laughs> like, because if you do that, I'm gonna purposely not play it. Like, I'm gonna like wait till they step off. <laughs> I'm gonna put it off for as long as no. I absolutely can. You know what I'm saying? And like, she stood there. I <laughs> I got to the point where I was, like, I was like, I'm gonna prove a point to her that I'm not gonna play this for right <laughs> now just because she wants me to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I put the I, like I made her stand there for probably like 20 minutes before I played the song. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't even remember what song it was. It was like, a, it wasn't a terrible request. Like, it wasn't a bad request, but it just like, it wasn't what I was trying to play right there. It's like somebody you know watching saying? you work. Like. No. Yeah. And then, like, I just tell them, like, I'll tell people, I'm like, I got you. I was like, I can do that. Just like, give me a few minutes to work to that to that area. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, but at the same time, like, I got to that area. What fucking song <laughs> is it? Oh, it was a basic, it was Southside by Lil Kiki. Oh, okay. So, but I just like, I was like, she was being so demanding. I was like, you're not going to tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I, I was a really big asshole. Like, I went into, like, a whole Texas set playing, like, everything just like Southside <laughs> without playing Southside. Like, playing everything around. She probably like, got hype every song. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. it's next. It's coming up next. <laughs> this it's, next song, it's on me, guys. <laughs> and I would play something else. And then finally, like, I was just like, all right, I'm going to play this shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's hilarious. But no, I, I mean, I like to be have fun with people. But yeah, no, I don't take requests after midnight typically because that's when I'm, like, really, like, getting into just, like, all right, I know where I want to take the room. Yeah. Because at that point, I'm really, like, freestyle the first, like, two hours. But peak hour, midnight till, like, one thirty, I'm very programmed out. Like, I, I program everything out, like, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or 15 to 30 minutes in my head. I'm like, all right, I know where I want to take the room for the next 15 minutes. Or I know where I want to take the room for the next half hour. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'll kind of put it together like that, and I'm like, that's why I just don't take requests. I'm like, I know what I'm about to do for the next, yeah, for the next hour and a half. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have it planned out already. Yeah, I have it planned out already. I know when, I know that for the next X amount of minutes, I want to take them to here, and then for the next 15, 20, 30 minutes after that, I want to 
take them down to some R and B for 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 ten minutes, and then I want to go into like some really fucking trap like Key Glock for like fifteen. It's fucking power out right yeah. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm all over the place. Yeah. It's a journey, you know what I'm saying? It's a you gotta take people on a ride. So that's dope. Bro, I gotta catch one of your sets, man. I'm kind of. I, I, I feel. I feel bad that I haven't caught one yet. We got it. I got. I got to hit back Sixth Street again. Right. <laughs> I got to start hitting Sixth Street again. It's been a while. Six has been a little. Uh, you know, it's been a little dangerous recently. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> gotta go straight I'm in gonna, the I'm, gym, straight I'm to your car. Go door. post up at the DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away right from next to it. Right. Next yeah, man. It's cra- yeah, I've, I've seen. I've seen a lot of crazy shit in, in my few years down there. It's definitely crazy, man. Uh, but nah, it's a. Uh, I never really feel like I, I, I kind of a big reason of why I stopped DJing at places that I have in the past is because I started looking out for my safety more and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I try to place myself in rooms where I feel a little bit safer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't like to feel like people get reckless. And and shit. Like, yeah, man. Like I don't like being I don't like DJing at places where there's a bunch of fights and stuff like that, man. Like I'm past that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, I don't want to just I just don't want to be in that environment. You paid your dues. I paid my dues. I'm good now. I can. I can be picky with where I want to DJ now, you know what I'm saying? That's like, awesome. And of course, like, fights still happen, but, like, it's... Because it's, when, when alcohol is in the mix, Sheesh. fights are going to happen, but it's, like, I don't want to be at a place that's, like, known for fights, and it's, like, there's, like, five, six, seven fights at night, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when I'm, like, at my spot on Saturday at library, like, we have a fight, like, maybe once every couple of weeks, you know what I'm saying? It's it's rare, you know what I'm saying? It's very rare that we have fights and stuff at most of my gigs, um... But it's bound to happen. Like, it's bound. It happens. Street. It's sixth street. People are stupid. They get they get drunk and stupid shit happens, man. Uh, but yeah, I try to stay clear of all that shit, man. <laughs> there used to be a time though. I, <laughs> I think every DJ is kind of good. I, I wouldn't say everyone, but especially like <laughs> if you've been in the hip hop realm, like of DJ, and like I don't care who you are, <laughs> you've definitely had your, those nights where you're like. Hey, bro, you want to see me start a fight? <laughs> <laughs> Nuck if you bust. <laughs> like, oh, you know yeah. Sometimes it's like super hard, bro. And, like, you just go on a string of songs where it's, like, like I have a whole, like, in my head, like, like even to this day, like, I I, <laughs> I don't do it anymore, like, but, like. You could start some shit I, if you want like, to. I, I, know, I have the power. <laughs> there's, there's, like, it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Like I said, if there, there's, I know there's a lot of DJs who can relate who have been there, and you're just bored, and you're like, "Hey, bro, you want to see a fight?" Yeah. Like, <laughs> and you just go on a string of like, Waka, Gucci, Chief <laughs> Keef, oh, like, throwback, knock if you buck, yeah. and 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 Jeezy, just boom. Somebody's <laughs> liquor does like, just ready. Somebody's gonna get their somebody shoes was, stepped on. Somebody was waiting on that one song, and he <laughs> plays <laughs> ten of it, uh-huh. and it's gonna be day, dog. Why you step yeah. on my shoe? Hey, why are you looking at me, bro? Yeah, exactly. Staring at the mirror, like, why are you staring at me, bro? Because, man, it's like you start, you start playing all those songs and all that testosterone in the room starts mm-hmm. building right? up. Yeah. And, like, somebody trying to be the alpha male, like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you with think I'm pussy over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pussy. I'm going to go up and push this nigga. It's so yeah, weird, bro. bro. That's crazy, man. That's funny as fuck. Uh, bro, what's something that you would tell, like, a, a, um, a younger DJ, bro, up and comer? You know, just some advice that uh, maybe you didn't get. Coming up, bro. Um, I said there was a lot. Shoof, man, there's a lot. Uh, I mean, I got this advice, but one thing I think the most important thing is show and face. Uh, being genuine with people, man. When you're building relationships, with people don't like build relationships to be like people. You, we can tell when you're being an opportunist. You know what I'm saying? When don't we, pose as man. Yeah, when you're not genuine and say like, like, bro, like I said, I'm, I'm always down to help put somebody on, but like I can tell if you're just like. If you're treating it like a bank transaction, you know what I'm saying? Like, because at the same time, like, cool, you might get in there, but then at the same time after that, that door is closed. Yeah. Uh, but that, and man, really just get out there, like, get like get out as much as you can, not even in your local scene and network, like, meet DJs out in other cities, and not even when you're DJing, just go out there to go hear them and hear yeah. new stuff. Supporting, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and learning, always be a student of the game. You know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of DJs get stuck in their comfort zone, um, and just kind of want to do what they want to do. Yeah. And don't always like <coughs> strive to like add something, a new element to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just fucking learn as much music as you can. Yeah. Learn as much music as you can. <laughs> like, do not box yourself in in one genre. You know what I'm saying? Um, it took me a long time to get out of that stigma of being the hip hop guy. Yeah. And then, uh, 
I mean, now I'm known as the open platform where they can play everything, but it's like at the same time, I'm also like in the Latin team now, which is weird because like I don't speak any Spanish. Yeah. Like, I know. You're debuting <laughs> in Mala Vida. That's awesome. That's <laughs> which awesome. is actually kind of crazy. That's actually why I was a little bit late today. So like I like finally decided I was like, I'm going to start fucking learning Spanish. Like it's like I down I bought the, I downloaded Babel and like paid for like a subscription and I just like, I spent like an hour and a half on there. Like, even though like I can understand a lot of Spanish, like I can read a lot of Spanish. Cause I'm from West Texas, man. I used to work in kitchens, dude. Like, mm-hmm. I can, I, I can understand a lot of Spanish. You know, so but I can't like hold a conversation. But I was like, I want to get to the point where like I can like start holding conversations with people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and so I was like, <laughs> on that shit, it's funny. Like starting from like day one, like like even though Basics. like I know a lot, I started from like the point where like for people that don't know anything. You know yeah. what I'm saying, like like basically shit like how to introduce yourself you know what i'm saying but it was really cool because i was like man i was like damn like like learning just like simple shit and so just fucking learning dog like that's awesome that's and i feel like that's something important that people end up not even taking any consideration or yeah. forgetting about because it does help you advance to other levels that people either assumed you would never get to or you yeah. just never felt comfortable getting to so yep Nah, that's that's really the main key I would always say, man, is for somebody that's new and starting out is just don't box yourself in, in in one specific thing, man. Try to be as open as you can because I promise there's not there's no money to be made. I mean, there's money to be made just being in one genre, but you have to be like that guy in that genre, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like being able to be the person that's open platform, like I can walk into any fucking room and I'm comfortable, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can walk into a Latin room. Like, I'm going to play with my eyes closed and be, and be cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't speak any fucking Spanish. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, or I can walk into, like, an all older like I did the other day and play, like, all oldies. You know what I'm saying? They're looking at me like a 25-year-old black kid. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. Like, and then I started doing it. They were like, oh, shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so just definitely, like, don't just don't box yourself in, man. Be, yeah. be open-minded. You know what I'm saying? Uh there's a lot of dope music out there, and you should play it. Hell yeah. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite fellow DJs in Austin? If you uh, can name a few. Of course, like, my my OGs that, that put me on, like, Hella Yellow, Cool Chris, guys like that. Uh, my boys, like, Manny Moe, man. I've watched Manny come up. Like, Shout fucking, out Manny Moe, my boy. Yeah, I love Manny. I've, it's been dope seeing Manny come up. Yeah. Uh, CRG, my boy. That's Club Killers fam. Uh, I mean, all the DJs here, man. I love all these DJs here. We're all we're all, we're all all family, man. It's Community. Like, yeah, it's all. I love That's all beautiful. the guys. Yeah. That is beautiful, man. I can't even think of anybody I don't really care for, man. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there might be one or two, but it's, I can't, uh, off the top of my head, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's more that, I, it's not, cause it's, it, I, if, if, if I don't really fuck with somebody like that, I just don't think about him, you know what I'm saying? I don't follow him or anything. So it's like, to me, it's just like, don't I don't really even sleep over it. Yeah, bro. Like, I don't even know that they're around, bro. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm so busy. Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't notice that shit, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't have time to, like, Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah, bro. Man, this has been a fun one. Hell yeah. <laughs> for real, I, for I real. as a person, I like to think of myself as a pretty, like, I, I love music the same way that yeah. you seem to describe. Like, I like trying to get into new music. I like collecting records and all that stuff. So it definitely was uh, a fun conversation to have. Oh, yeah, you. dude. I, I, shit, I just love talking about music, man. It's my life. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. That's how we got into this. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hey, for real, though. And I'm definitely going to pull up on you on a set. For real, for yeah, real. Yeah, man. Uh, I would say, like, the, the, my most fun party is obviously Saturday night. Saturday night. Library. Um, I would say, like, you're not going to get If you were to pull up this week, you wouldn't get to see me because I'm only playing till midnight. I got my homie Spade is coming out from Dallas. I actually played at his spot with him this past Saturday. Mm. So I got him coming to play with me. So he'll be playing from 12 to 2 this week. But anytime after that, man, I was like, pull up on library, man. We'll drink, we'll have a good time. Hey, <laughs> hey, for real, for real. I'm with it. We'll, take we'll, some, we'll have some tequila. Yeah. We'll, take, we'll, we'll take an excessive amount of shots, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let's do it. Never hey, hey, make, Let's do it. Make, make sure you Uber when you come that night. So. <laughs> yeah, Drew, I say don't drink and drive, <laughs> yeah. Drink responsibly. Yeah, man. <laughs> but uh, it has, uh, thank you so much for coming down and yeah, sitting man, down with us, sure, man. man. Um, I've been looking forward to it, man. I've had a busy month leading up to it, but... Uh, here Glad I was are. able to make it, man. Yeah, for oh, sure. Oh. It was a little bit late, man, but... Uh, <laughs> no, no, you're, all, you're all good. That's man. how it goes, I was man. running on DJ time, you know what I'm saying, yeah. man? <laughs> and, and plus, we're up in the hills, too, so it's yeah, not, you know, it's, a close drive. Yeah. So, you know, it's cool. It's I cool. didn't realize how far it was. I typed it in. I was like, oh, shit. I know. That's, that's, what that's what everybody says. And I'm like, I'm sorry, y'all. Because like, I'm so used to going downtown. I'm like, it's like 15, 20 minute drive. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> On a mission. And then, like I said, bro, like, I was speeding, like, even though, like, going through the hills, like, I wasn't going crazy, like, on Capital Texas, I would be like, when I, 
When I saw that BK City Limit mm-hmm. sign, I was like, speed limit. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was not like, like, nowhere, bro. Like, I was smoking a blunt. I was like, bro, I'm not like, they not about to get me out here, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're ass out here. I fucking, yeah, nah, they're ass out here. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, I think the last time I've actually like been out in this area, like, this is only the second time I've actually like been in BK, like actually like chilling. Mm-hmm. The last time I was out here was like a few years ago with my homie. And it was like right before South by Southwest. It was like probably... 2017 it was like the day before South by started and like he had like you know fishbowl no tin on his windows two black kids with dreads bro and fucking BK at like 11.30 at night bro like, bro, like yeah yeah we're getting pulled over for sure bro like <laughs> and so yeah bro like but luckily like, the cop was cool like didn't sir I, I thought I was going to jail bro cause yeah. I had a bunch of bud and shit bro I was like Jeez. oh fuck bro I was texting my homie I was like hey bro if I don't make it to the South by show tomorrow this is why no, like no. <laughs> Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, drive yeah. safe in B caves, man. Yeah, yeah uh, be careful out here, man. They 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 be outside in B <laughs> cave, bro. For real, for real. I'm wanted out here now. <laughs> hey, hey, shh. Don't say don't say nothing, man. Don't say That's nothing, bro. Hey, look, 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 like, <laughs> look at it. Especially like when I leave and I'm trying to find the fastest route to Rivers. Like, I'm going to because I'm going over to Jackalope South Shore after okay. this. Okay. They got like steak night on Tuesdays and it's the two year anniversary. And so I'm there's sure. like a there's a lot of DJs. There's a few DJs from out of town, uh, in town tonight, so go. Link up with all the ad- some of the out of town homies and shit like that, right and then I don't know. It's Toxic Tuesdays. I'm probably <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up on Sixth Street, man. Uh-oh. At Toxic Tuesdays. Oh, yeah, man. Go pull up on Hella Yellow tonight. Mm-hmm. Damn, yeah, we'll, be safe so, on six, yeah bro. we'll we'll definitely have to have you come back on the show. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah I'm always down, bro. Cool, we we'll have to have a sit down with you, Manny. Call, we'll have to have a DJ sit down at some point. Hell yeah, yeah. let's do it. We'll no, do that. I can round up some of the guys. There you go. The thing, you know what I'm saying? A, a, a hey. Steezy edition. For, hey, for real, <laughs> for real. That'll yeah. be live as shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. We can It'll definitely happen. round up some of the guys. I know Manny's down. Manny likes to talk. He'll sit down. Yeah. My shit, brother. he's already been up. Well, not. Well, he's, he's done everything. He sat yeah. down with me like three times yeah. on the sports. We have the sports, the sports show, too. Yeah. So. Oh uh, yeah, I know, like, no. I know like Scion would be down. Scion's like part mm-hmm. of like Cream Click Gang and all yeah. that. Like we have, yeah, we have yeah, Scion on our uh, podcast. Yeah, mm-hmm. say, so I know Scion would be down. Scion loves to talk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that'll be dope as shit, man. Let's let's set that up. Yeah, we man. will, we will. But uh, as we usually like to do, I, I failed to mention to you before we started recording, we like to end on a positive <laughs> note, which we all just kind of take turns and something positive that you like to put out to the world. Okay. Something that's happened to you or something you just want to put out into the world, you yeah. know, whatever. Would you like to kick it off? Or would you like us to do it? So? Uh, I'll let y'all go. All right. So you want me to go? I, I know I never go first. <laughs> hey. I can do the... I can I can trying to you. see. I'm I can freestyle to... it in my head right now. Um, uh, Man. Oh, fuck, bro. I don't know. I can um, go. I mean, keep it short and sweet. Short and sweet. Uh... You know, um, no matter what you do, like don't forget like your home base, right? Like, uh, like I do a lot. You feel me? Like yeah. whether it's the the po- this podcast or my other podcast, uh, also manage an artist. Uh, I got other shit going, like um, um, like store shit. Just, just, just other shit. Like, don't forget, like your family. Like, I have kids, yeah. you know, and and you know, I'm away from them a lot. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, the time that I am at home, you know, I try to make the best of it. So, like, you know, if you're doing juggling X, Y, and Z, if you do have that family, never forget your family at home, man. Facts. Always touch base. Love that. Beautiful. I love that. Hey, you know, love it. I'm trying to be like <laughs> you, bro. <I'm> <laughs> Uh, let me see. Um, uh, um, since we are on the topic of creativity, I did mention something. That I feel I keep I keep wanting to say earlier this week, but it's barely fucking Tuesday. It's been a long past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. mm-hmm. <laughs> this year, for sure, personally, has been the most creative year I've ever had. But on that note, um, this is influenced by Nova, my daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, she recently got her hair dyed like a split. Yeah. Pink and blue. It looks amazing. But uh, she definitely inspires me to be so creative. So that's something I want to put out there. Um, never steer away from your creativity side. Even if you don't feel like you're artistic or uh, are not creative, don't never let that side go because it may you never, you, you never know. It may spark the next big thing that could... Uh, keep you on a high for the remainder of the year or whatnot, you know, or give Definitely. you the next best idea, you know. You never know. Like, I would not be sitting here talking to one of the best Austin DJs <laughs> if go. it wasn't for, Let's like, go. a creative yeah. idea to sit down and just talk with my friends, you know. Like, I appreciate that. I, I, I always, always, never be afraid to be creative. I always, like like Steezy said, don't be scared to be uncomfortable. Just, you know, do what you want to do. 
Oh, Fuck with that. I kind of kind of bounce off the same thing, man. It kind of like one thing I always kind of like try to tell people, man, in life, you just gotta take a jump. Like always believe in yourself, man. Like never like doubt yourself. And like if I would have like doubted myself with this DJ shit, I would not be like being able to live the life that I live now. You know what I'm saying? Be comfortable, financially comfortable, be able to do whatever I want, whatever the fuck I want. Like take that jump in life. If there's something you want to do, man, like. Don't be scared of your friends making fun of you and shit. Like, don't, like, let nobody hold you back. Just jump, dog. Like, just just do it, man. Because what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, you, you go back to what whatever you're doing before? Like, that's, man. Beautiful. So. Well, um, can you end us on that Meg and The Office mix? Uh, if it, you have it, because I would like to a, hear that. Well, it's, it's, a, it's Lizzo. I don't know why I said Meg. I'm so <laughs> racist. God. <laughs> Yeah, we don't all look alike. I hate sir. myself. <laughs> don't yeah. all look alike, sir. That is me. Let, uh, let me open up my Serato again. Real it's because they're both from Houston. That's why. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lizzo's, Lizzo's from Houston. I forgot you're un- yeah, uncultured I mean, from Houston. Yeah, <laughs> super un- music. Uncultured. We swine. have a lot to teach you, ever. <laughs> By the way, don't forget to hit up ever, y'all. Hey. Don't ever say I didn't do nothing nice for you, man. On Christians mingle. <laughs> I'm, I'm, joking. I'm joking. So what's cool is uh the dude I was telling you about earlier, Four Color Zach, the one I showed y'all a couple of those transitions, yeah. like the little John transition. So this remix is actually his remix. He made it. so everything comes full circle, like yeah. this stuff, the random shit. So like it's actually his remix that that he made, and I heard of it because of him. I heard it in one of his sets, and I was like, "What is that, bro?" Like, <laughs> all right, so this is it. It's only like a minute, so we can obviously just fucking yeah. Run. I'm Mario from the South Side. Neighborhood Nick, man. It's TZD. And this is I don't know, it's perfect. I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm a hundred percent. That bitch, even when I'm crying crazy, yeah, I fuck with it. I love that. <laughs> Hella random, but it's dope. <laughs> I Super love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> DZ, thank you. Yeah, for sure, man. Thank y'all for having me.